Imagine that you are a jester on the stage in the French countryside, traveling with your troop of theatrical people, and get dressed. It's my favorite time of year. It's that time to dive in to all of the collections, the trends, and the details from the runways that I am absolutely loving. And this is just my favorite because I love to soak up new inspiration. I get a little bit bored. I don't know if you feel that way, but I kind of start to feel like, what do I like? What do I want to wear? What's inspiring me? And so I do feel like every season brings new inspiration for me. And the way I like to approach each season is to, yes, look at the collections, and then I like to dream up characters based off of maybe some of the trends that I'm seeing on the runway or just things that start to kind of group together. And I think this comes from my love of the original magazine. Oh, I mean, we still have magazines, but not to the level that we used to. But just the editorials where they would decide a whole story for maybe a trend they were exploring based off the runway collections that they'd seen during Fashion Month and then tell a whole story. And I think Grace Coddington was one of the best at doing this. And so this is the way that I love to approach each new season is to really look at all of the collections and then from there create characters that I'm going to identify with for the season. And it just makes getting dressed so much more fun to imagine being this person in this character escaping into the world of that character and then you know playing dress up in our closets no matter where we go so first thing i do is i go to all the resources i still love to find all of the magazines that have the new spring dressing in it whether it's through a trend report they've done or an editorial even I love to look at the different ads from the different designers because they're telling their own story with each collection. So I head to my local bookstore and I pick up all the latest magazines, which I recently just did and I had so much fun doing it. And then my favorite resource, I still love paper. I want to see it. Yes, I go on Pinterest and all of those other places, but I want to see it in a book. And this is my favorite. It's the Vogue France Collections magazine. And I pick this up every season because it has all of the collections from each city and it kind of highlights just a few of the looks and it's helpful to me because I can kind of get a sense of the collection and then if there's one I'm really drawn to then I'll go and deep dive into that collection. So then I will look at the Vogue runway and look at the entire you know collection that prints down the runways but I also I'll go to the Instagram account of that designer I'll see what they're posting if they share behind the scenes images I also love to go to their website and see what they've created maybe they've made a small you know film to go with the collection sometimes there's behind the scenes footage anything that just lets me in on the creative process even more gets me so excited I don't want to just see the full look I want to see like how did they get to that point or even what inspired them because I feel like that helps to really tell the whole story that I want to tell. So start with the magazines and then from there I explore the collections that made me the most excited. So first I'm just going to run through some of the collections that got me really excited. We're going to do a flash through them and then based off of those we will dive into three characters that I've developed for spring. I will probably develop more as the season continues but these are the three that I'm starting with and that I'm really connecting to and loving right now. And then we'll go into breaking down some of the little details, the accessories, the added elements that I am loving this season. I also think it's really great for the thrifting in all of us to kind of have an idea of things to keep our eye out for. So we're going to talk about details, accessories, all the cherries on top. I feel like the minute you see this collection, you'll know that I love it. And that is Paul and Joe. I often love Paul and Joe, I think because they seem to embrace a playful, whimsical sense of dressing, and that makes me so happy. And this season, I loved it because the inspiration was 16th century theater troops. And if you really go back and look at just even paintings based on theater troops, they're so much fun. They're a great inspiration. There's all the balloon 
you know, balloon pants, balloon sleeves, collars, frillies, ruffles, romance. This definitely touches on some of the inspiration that I was loving last year, which is some of that clown dressing. And it's birthed out of theater, which is probably one of my original inspirations of my life was theater. So I feel like this is just so much fun because I can take the stage every single day in these different outfits. And I love some of the elements of the collection with what I think are little kind of clown details. If it's the little bobble balls on the dresses, if it's the ruffle collars, I love the sailor hats with the ribbon around the neck, which if you go back and look at my what I wore from March, I took some of that inspiration already and did that with my sailor hat. So I think it's a fun way to play around with dressing up a look. And then there's florals, there's vertical stripes. I always love a vertical stripe. And so this collection, just woke up that playful whimsical side of me and I absolutely love it and I also love their little rosy red cheeks. I think that could be really fun to play around with. All right the next collection I'm loving is Vaquera which is a incredible brand. I love this. It's definitely a little more edgy than my personal style but there's so many amazing styling details in every single collection even if you look back at previous seasons, even if you look forward, I am always so inspired by their styling. And this season, I love it because they embraced this edgy sailor, right? An edgy punk sailor. I'm loving it. There is suit ties that are really exaggerated. There's a punk sailor hat. There's kind of military style berets with red lips. We have ties worn as accessories to the hair underneath the hats. I also love these incredible exaggerated floral brooch moments they have created and worn on their neck, on their leg. I'm loving that. I think I need to come up with my own version of that. Also this element of fur thrown into a spring collection, which I just think is really fun, like a fur stole and some of the more classic looks with the you know kind of army green trench coat a white button up a tie and then a beret but there's like elements of punk in the mix as well so this collection just wakes up my styling brain and gets me so excited to play dress up in previous seasons i've started to be really inspired by etro i think there's always an element of that kind of 70s jet set uh, storyline that I really connect to. I think that's like the inner bohemian in me loves it, but it's like an elevated chic version of it. So I really loved their spring collection. I loved the extra wide leg trousers that look like they're from upholstery. I love the long exaggerated cardigans. This look with the midi length skirt and then more of a kind of a spring smoking jacket with the bra underneath ah socks and platform shoes with it i absolutely love it and then this makes me also think of you know traveling during the summertime and wearing kind of more of those easy breezy looks with like wide leg pants and tops that drip and drape and it just i feel like this is a version of me that is in escape mode in terms of dressing up with a vacation in mind I also really love that they mixed leather in with their bold prints. So I think that's a fun juxtaposition of taking more of a, you know, a spring summer colorful mixed print look and then adding a brown leather jacket or, or a black leather skirt. So putting those two together, I think can be a really interesting styling detail. And then one other part of their collection that I loved were these really incredible brass chokers. I am definitely seeing some of the return of chokers happening, which I am all here for. So really statement chokers. I love that it almost looks like medallions around the neck. And I feel like that's easily attainable with thrifting a really great chunky gold necklace or brass necklace at a thrift store. And then the last collection I'm going to mention, there's others that are definitely super fun to me, but in terms of some of my favorites is Airdom. They always have something really romantic and fanciful and it just feels like a dream. I want to live in some amazing country estate and frolic in the fields or be swept 
up in a midnight ball gown or something <laughs> with their collections. So I absolutely fell in love with their spring collection. And what I really loved about this is the mix of kind of hearty workwear with romantic florals. I really imagine the inspiration behind this being the English garden. An English garden is nothing's perfect. Everything's a little unruly and wild, but it's still romantic and floral and smells sweet. So it's that great mix, which I always love a mix. I love juxtaposition. So this entire collection has that for me, even with some of these amazing kind of 1950s silhouette dresses, but with black leather gloves to go with that. And then of course, I think the hero piece, honestly, I feel like it's the hero piece of the entire spring season is the Airdom coat that they did in collaboration with Barber Coats. And it's this mix of kind of like a workwear jacket with plaid and quilting. And then with this like, really soft feminine floral in the mix and I've seen it in every single editorial in every magazine. Everybody has covered this coat and that would be a dream but I think you can really capture that when you go into your closet thinking okay what's something kind of workwear inspired I have if it's a canvas jacket, a ball color that's something I've been talking about a lot and something I'm loving. Some of those workwear pieces and then pulling out a romantic soft floral to mix it in. So if it's a great floral skirt and then doing a workwear jacket with it and then maybe like a lacy soft suede corset underneath. So anyways, playing with the juxtaposition is always something I'm looking for. And now to introduce the spring characters that I am dressing up. I've already started dressing them up and I'm gonna have more fun with them this season. And the first one is the sailor, which I feel like this is not new for me. I feel like I've been in a sailor nautical mood for a while now. And it's just the relationship is sailing away, getting swept away on the open seas. Um, I love it. It's the inspiration with nautical. So think sailor shirts, nautical stripes, navies, reds, whites, everything classic. I feel like I want to be on a coast somewhere, just feeling the salty air and blowing, blowing my hair wild and free. So I'm loving all of the sailor hats that I saw on the spring runways. That's making me so happy since I found that sailor hat, I feel like a few years ago, and it started to become a staple for me. And so it's fun to see it popping up everywhere. I do think some of the elements of even creating like a little bow detail with the sailor hat can be really fun or punking it up like we saw on Vakira's runway. Um, I feel like you could take sailor in a lot of different directions. You don't have to just do strictly very classic, you know, kind of almost polo Ralph Lauren nautical vibes. You could really go super punk with it. You can also go romantic with the sailor, more theatrical with the sailor. I think of Bodhi also has a lot of elements of sailor in the mix and I always think their stuff feels very Americana and really built on a lot of the vintage like 1940s amazing classic pieces. I've had some fun already dressing up the sailor. You can see a few of the outfits that I wore a few weeks ago right here with mixing stripes. I also kind of did like a fisherman sailor where I wore that fish, I think of it as a fishnet sweater with creamy canvas pants and then my sailor hat. Also this really great navy pea coat with a wide leg chino and then I'm loving the white kind of structure of a classic cocktail hat with that and then the ruffles. So it doesn't have to be strictly, you know, a striped shirt, a navy jacket, and classic pants. It can go in a lot of different directions and it's really fun to dress up. So I love the sailor and I'm excited to embrace the sailor and continue to dress it up this season. Next we have the traveling troupe, which is all definitely very inspired by what I saw on Paul and Joe's runway. And that's the idea of a theatrical troupe in the 16th century, the French 16th century to be exact, which was the inspiration for the Paul and Joe collection. So I think that's touching on a lot of the elements that I've already been having fun with, but I want to continue that. And that's a lot of the clown elements are in there. I think of a lot of vertical stripes, extra large polka dots, ruffled collars, 
even some of the elements that we're seeing in Molly Goddard or Simone Rocha. I think you could even maybe reference Sandy Liang in this. So some of the ballet core is in the mix with this. But anything that feels like I'm going to take the stage and take on the day and be, you know, playful and whimsical, I just think it's embracing that theater kid in me with all of these looks. So I feel like I dressed up some of this last year, but I want to continue that into spring. And I think this time maybe bringing some really fun color into the mix, if that's pinks and purples and reds, and just having fun with a really fresh take on the traveling troupe. And honestly, I looked at old images from, you know, sketches of theater troops from the 16th century, and they can be your inspiration because it's really inspiring. And I think of jesters and someone who would juggle and all of that. So imagine that you are a jester on the stage in the French countryside, traveling with your troupe of theatrical people and get dressed. And then the last character is a little spin on someone I introduced a few seasons ago, and that was the florist. And this time we are calling it the Rambling Rose because this is taking inspiration from Airdom, which we just talked about, and it's the florist, but this time we're mixing it in with, I think of like the English countryside, stuff that you would need to wear if you were going out and it was a little cooler and the wind is blowing, it might also rain, so you might need wellies, you're gonna be working in your garden, so I'm thinking baskets and straw hats and then workwear coats or workwear pants, but then mixing it with romantic florals, None of this is perfect. It's very wild and free. And I just love this to me. I, I've been having fun already kind of dressing up this inspiration. I've been doing some of these floral looks a little bit that I'm having fun with and I want to continue doing that. But even this look here, which is like those kind of canvassy green floral, very exaggerated wide leg pants with this army green sweater. And then I did the bow with the flower on it. There's elements of that that are very earthy and then very romantic and floral, but it's like a wild floral. So I think this is just such a fun inspiration that I'm gonna have such a great time dressing up the uh, rambling rose. And then just for some final details, we gotta talk about the cherries on top that I like to call them, but it could be really anywhere on your body that you're adding those a little extra accoutrements to the outfit, the accessories, the shoes, the bags, all the things that I think make outfits even more fun. And some of the things that I'm really loving, let's start it off with the sailor hat. I feel like all of us should have a version of a sailor hat, if that's a punk version, a straw version like I have, or even the very traditional sailor hat. So first off, sailor hats. Let's also just mention hats in general. I love to wear a hat and this hat in particular on Aliyah's runway. And honestly, I loved the black and white styling of Aliyah. It's very simple, minimalist, but so incredibly statement at the same time. I'm on the hunt right now for the perfect black pillbox hat. I'm very particular about what I want, so I haven't found exactly that yet. But my gem search right now, gem, G-E-M, everyone should get this app because it searches all of the sites for you, Etsy, eBay, all of it. I go into gem and I type in, you know, whatever I'm looking for, and then I save all my searches. So I'm looking for a hat very much like I saw on the Alaya runway. So I think like a black pillbox hat, and I'm also seeing it for fall, so one to have. Oh, this is just like speaking to my maybe Pat Field, Carrie Bradshaw heart. And that is the statement belt. This season, we're seeing a lot of statement belts, but worn lower on the hips, which I just think is fun. We're kind of went on the high waist, which I still love, but also mixing it in low waist and shopping vintage belts to me. I think we should just all shop vintage belts. I don't even think we need new ones. We just should use vintage ones because they are the best belts. You can find them online so easily. Again, use Gem app to look up statement belts. And I think in particular, there's a lot of more of that kind of like grommet style. I think uh, last week in my What I Wore, I did the white wrap grommet belts, even some 
feel like the original Carrie Bradshaw studded belt that I fell in love with. So some of those elements are coming back in belts, but honestly, I just think you can just have fun with belts. And when you find those longer ones, don't shy away from them because you can wear them low on the hips. You can wear them with a longer shirt. You can wear them on the pants. You can do like a crop and even Chipotle Luena with that really amazing carabiner style belt. So statement belts making me very happy. I mentioned this a little bit ago with Etro, but I am definitely seeing the return of the choker necklace. Again, this is one that's so easily thriftable. Just go to the jewelry section, look for a really great statement choker necklaces, or just like a nice gold chain. Just have fun with some choker necklaces this season. And then one other thing that I'm really loving as well is, which I feel like I've been loving for a while, is the pointy toe pump or even the pointy toe mule. I, I just think it's so chic, like a pointy toe shoe. I just love it. I love with a pointy toe shoe doing a lot of juxtaposition dressing. So wearing more of like a workwear pant and then you throw on like a pointy toe mule with it or pump or a sling back and it just elevates the whole look, like cuff those pants up, throw on the pointy toe pump, throw a button down on in a blazer and you look super chic, super cool and get ones that you can run around in all day. And I always love, but have been extra loving, the floral brooch, and in particular, a very exaggerated version of it. Oh, you have to check out Willie Shaveria. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but such an amazing collection for spring, wide leg pants, blazers, but with huge flowers pinned on the side. And I have found some amazing options on Etsy, which I am currently purchasing and it's on its way, a big red flower that I'm gonna wear on blazers, shirts, all of that stuff. But I like a smaller one worn on my neck. I love them anywhere. I love them on my ankle. I love them on a hat. I love them on my wrist. Carrie Bradshaw, thank you for originally wearing them all the time because I love them. So wearing florals anywhere, everywhere. And then last, I'm just still loving a tie. I loved how Vaquera wore ties in unique places, underneath hats, exaggerated shapes, even turning ties into floral brooches. Somebody out there, please make one. Let me know if you do, I'd love to buy it. Even last summer, I did a tie. I styled it as a tie, but then put it on my waist with a belt. That was such a fun little styling moment. So I just think like using ties in lots of unique ways is still really fun. And I feel like that's also like a great way to play around with the um, inspiration of the sailor, like a great kind of vertical stripe tie if it's red and tan or whatever it is. So I still love a tie. And that is it. I'm feeling even more inspired just talking about all of this with you all. And I'm so excited now because I'm going to do part two, which is work on updating my closet, taking out the winter and fall stuff and putting in all of the spring stuff and just even categorizing some of my closet sections with some of these ideas in mind. I think that's a fun way to organize your closet. So we'll get more into that next week. That is it. I'm so excited for this season and really this takes me into summer as well. I do think summer's fun because, you know, if even if there's like simple traveling in the mix, if it's going away to a cabin and getting in the mountains or being by the ocean or a lake or whatever it is, I just think if you get like a little chance to escape, that can be all new inspiration for you for your summer. So I will be taking some of these spring things into summer and then also letting summer inspire just with, even if it's like pretending to escape in different places uh, for the summer as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel. I have new videos every single Thursday. Also make sure you are subscribed to the weekly scoop email that comes out every single Tuesday into your inboxes. And I always fill it with inspiration. Usually if I've talked about something in a video, I'm gonna have, you know, mood boards or more images or whatever it is there. I also feature different members of the Always Play Dress Up Club who are using the hashtag Always Play Dress Up on Instagram. So make sure you're using that hashtag so that I can see your amazing looks that you're dressing up. And finally, always play dress up. Bye! <laughs>